quickly get everybody to please stand and remove your hats. We will have the presentation of the colors with Lieutenant Colonel Retired Pete Smolter and the NCHS Mustang Battalion. to welcome Alexandra Vincent for, with the National Anthem. And if everyone would please uh, remain standing for the presentation of the memorial wreath by Sergeant First Class Shane Vincent. We will now play taps. If all service members will render the hand salute on its first note, and if everyone else would please put your hand over your heart.
to Walker, I will be your master of ceremonies tonight. And it is my great honor to uh, introduce our first speaker of the evening, your governor, Mr. Mark Gordon. Thank you, Kim, and for those gathered tonight, what a, what a remarkable honor. Yeah, as I was, I was thinking about this, and I was thinking of, a, of the fact that our country is going through a lot of pain right now. And yet it's moments like this, it's moments like this that bring us together, that remind us of what an incredible country we live in. And the people that have made it so, people like yourselves, people like Leonard Robinson, people like Steve Harshman and Joe McGuire who saw fit to remember a great man with a lot of spirit. There is one word, exactly one word in the English language which is from the Filipinos. That word is bundo and it means hill. And when the Americans got to the Philippines, they would say, where are the Japanese? And they would say in bundo and so that became boondocks. And I think what a remarkably fitting thing that a man of such faith, of such character, of such spirit, and such fabric and character, that we can think about the Philippines, we can think about the mountains, we can think about what that means to Wyoming, we can think about what that means to our country. And the fact that it is faith, faith in God Almighty, faith in our spirit and in our humanness and a remarkable appreciation of what this country means about all of them that brings us together this evening to honor a man and to remind us every time we go by this bridge of exactly what it is we are all fighting for every single day and it takes incredible moments like World War II, like the Korean War, like the Vietnam War, like every day, Desert Storm, the war we've been in Afghanistan, to remember that this country stands for so much. This state stands for so much. And this, these people here tonight, remembering this great man, God bless you. you think about that 75 years ago and 10 days that is when Leonard Robinson was set free he gained 24 pounds by the next day 24 pounds I think of a cousin of mine John Waters who was in a German and prisoner of war camp through most of the war he was my size about 197 pounds or so and they rescued him 92 pounds. The Japanese were worse than the Germans. Think about that. Think about the faith. So thank you for being here this evening. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, for your work. Thank you, Joe. Thank you for all of you who've come here tonight. Let's remember those great soldiers, those great men and women who are this very night protecting our country protecting our way of life. And let's never forget that. Thank you. Thank you, Governor Gordon. All right, and next up, I would like to invite Steve Harshman up here, the man who did all the work, almost, lots of it, to make this happen tonight. Representative Speaker of the House, Steve Harshman. Thank you all for being here, and I just want to do uh, my story with Leonard Robinson really uh, goes back to the mid-90s. So I'm a high school history teacher at Trona County High School, and I've got a student in my class, Charlie, who lives here in North Casper, and uh, we're in the World War II unit, and he comes up to me after class and he says, you should have my pastor come visit our class. I said, well, who's your pastor? And he says, uh, Dr. Robinson. And so we get hooked up and I invite, and, and Mr. Robinson comes to our class and began the first of many years that he would visit my class and brought all of his memorabilia and, and told the story 
unbelievable story. Uh, uh, and and I'll, the things I remember from this is from the 90s. And he said, uh, you know, I and he told the kids this he survived because of his faith, uh, because of all the teamwork around him. And uh, but his faith and and uh, when he went into the service, he was a large man. He said he was 200 pounds. He was a bigger guy. And when he came out, he was 90 pounds. I rescued him. Talked about his the story of the march, obviously, and the, the brave Filipinos who really risked everything to help them along the way. Uh, he, then he served his time in a prisoner of war camp in the Philippines, and then the story about the hell ships and how he survived the hell ship trip to Japan, and then three and a half years of slavery as a laborer in the docks of Japan, uh, really right up to the end of uh, the end of the war. And so it's really an incredible story. So I've had this on my mind, and then. Uh, then I, my work in the legislature, I worked on the Appropriations Committee for about 10 years. And then my last uh, last term on appropriations, I was a chairman. And the new the director of the Department of Audit was Pam Robinson. And so I, and, and Pam and I, as you're the chairman, and you know all these committee chairmen and, and uh, or committee director, uh, directors of these agencies. And... Uh, and I remember my last day in there, I think was Pam's, Pam was getting ready to retire. And uh, I talked about Pam and her service to our state and about her dad and uh, his service to our state, city of Casper. Pam said he lived here for 41 years. Uh, and the service to uh, the people of Casper that maybe many of us never see, really remarkable. And I think that generation, you know, not only the tremendous sacrifices. I mean, I think just a third of Dr. Robinson's unit made it back home. But then to come back home and build this great country, it's just, it's amazing. And so, so I've had this on my heart for a while about this idea in Wyoming, we haven't done a lot of this. And you go to other states and they honor a lot of their heroes, uh, bridges, and highways, landmarks and those kind of things and so I've had this on my heart for a while and, and uh, so I got a hold of Pam uh, early winter before the session I said I have this idea and I just wanted to get your permission and she said we'd be honored uh, that you'd remember my dad and so you'll see some descriptors on that sign when the, when the, the covering comes down in a bit but Pam was really insistent that man of faith was on there. That, that was the key, really, his faith that brought him home and all these years of service. So, uh, so I appreciate all the work that everybody's done. I appreciate all of you and all you veterans who've been here. My dad was a World War II Army Air Corps guy. All these great vets who have built this country. So we really appreciate it. So my hope is, and, and working with uh, Director Reiner, who is the Adjutant General and now is the Director of YDOT. And uh, I just appreciate his can-do attitude. And Mark, who designed the sign, and everybody was just, yes, we can do it. Initially thought about the sign on the interstate where people see it on the interstate. And I talked, I said, you know, I really want the kids who drive under that bridge going home each day that they look up and see that and say, who's Leonard Robinson? And then, you know, they'll do like all of us do, they'll Google it. <laughs> and then uh, his memory will live on. Because that's what's built this country, or people like him. So, again, really appreciative, and really uh, with a tremendous amount of gratitude and thanks to the governor, Pam, and I think your sister Paula is watching, I think, through technology. Appreciate her joining us. I uh, appreciate all of you being here. Joe McGuire, appreciate your work to make this happen and all the representatives who helped co-sponsor this and uh, appreciate the governor's signature and your your great uh, remarks tonight, governor. Appreciate your leadership and I think the governor's comments, you know, this country's been through a lot of tough times and we got a lot of tough people and uh, we're gonna be fine. So again, with great appreciation, 
I think I'm now supposed to give a high sign, or am I supposed to turn? Joe McGuire, I think we're supposed to wave. To y I think we everybody wave to the Y dot workers. Now I think we look over to the sign. It's in the middle of the bridge, and I think the covering will come down. Yeah.